Welcome to Rocket Ship, the podcast where web developers learn the skills and secrets to ship awesome React Native apps. I'm Simon Grimm, creator of Galaxies.dev, and today is the second solo episode on this podcast in a row, and I swear it's going to be the last for a while because I got some great guests lined up. Next, we're going to talk about Superbase, then we're going to have a member from the Expo team, and then we're going to actually talk about Theo or with Theo on this podcast. Uh, so a few of you might know him as a very popular uh, streamer and YouTuber. Anyway, I hope you had a great start in 2024, and today I want to talk with you about reasons for using React Native and why you should use React Native in 2024. I think that's a fitting topic. We're going to talk about four whys in this podcast, and before we dive into that, I just want to quickly mention that on galaxies.dev, which is my online school, if you haven't checked it out for all React Native developers, there is currently a discount going on. So... You can use the code, let me look it up, Galaxies24 at the checkout. So Galaxies24, 24, 24 as a number, to get 25% off for your th uh, first three months of Galaxies Pro. So again, use code Galaxies24 and you will get a 25% discount on your first three months of Galaxies.dev Pro, which includes... Tons of great courses, material, and our community and access to office hours. So if you're serious about learning React Native this year, and I will give you a few reasons in this podcast why you want to learn it, then you should check it out at galaxies.dev, create a free account, and then use the code galaxies24. Now, the four whys of why you should use React Native. Actually, the first one is a little step back because... I had a, a pretty successful video last year about why I use React Native. I think I called it like that. And that was also the inspiration for this podcast episode. So if you watch that video, you might see some similarities between the video and this podcast. Now, the first why is why I didn't use React Native in the past. I think this is important, especially for the people who've been following me for quite some time. So I've been using Ionic and Angular and other sorts of web frameworks since basically 2014, I think. And I had a small um, checkout phase of React Native in about 2015 or 2016, but I didn't follow it up. I thought it was actually pretty cool, but I kept my focus on Angular for a specific reason. Now, the reason is that I kind of gradually built up my business around that time, and it was based on Ionic and Angular. I launched the Ionic Academy in 2018, 2017, something like that. Uh, which was also the year I became self-employed and I've been self-employed since that time. So my whole business was based on Angular Ionic Capacitor. So it didn't make any sense for me to check out React Native, but I always knew that the grass on the other side <laughs> is greener. No, uh, this is actually like a funny thing, but I always knew that React Native is great. Tons of people were using it. I was reading about it in the ratings in a Stack Overflow or any other survey. React Native was pretty much always at the top. So I knew it had to be great. It just didn't fit my uh, circumstances at that point. No. Jumping into the future uh, in last year, uh, actually two years ago already now, I decided that it's time to open up to other frameworks. So the shift I made was from only web to Ionic, was from web to React Native. And it kind of made sense to me. So why did I decide to use it? Well, the ecosystem of React Native, or let's say the ecosystem of React, is just a whole lot bigger than Angular was at that time. I mean, Angular did some pretty cool things in 23, and I'm sure they will continue to grow this year again, but nothing currently beats the React ecosystem. And React Native is just like influenced by the React ecosystem. I know you can't use everything from React because of the DOM and stuff, but many more people are just using it. Many more people come from React to React Native. So my reason to use it was just that it is one, really good, as we will talk about in a second, and two, the ecosystem is just huge. And for me, it is a business because I create online courses, I create content around this, and I make a living by these things. So yes, maybe something like, I don't know, QT or <laughs> some some like super special thing is cool and people use it. But if I can't reach the masses, if I can't help a lot of people and uh, create cool stuff about it online, the whole thing I've built here around me just simply wouldn't work. So 
um, the whole ecosystem and the sheer number of React developers gave me the kick to get more into React Native. So this is why I didn't use it and why I decided to use it. Now, what's probably even more interesting is for you why you should use it. And I will follow it up with why it's maybe the best, but wait for that. So um, why should you use React Native? Well, I asked myself this question many years, actually. So in the past, I was a happy user of Cordova or Capacitor, which basically wraps your web application in a container, and then you can ship a native iOS and Android application. You have basically 100% code share between web and native, something you don't really have with React Native yet. Yeah, I know there are some tendencies with Expo Web, or we can use like a mono repository and Solito and whatnot, but we get more code share with Capacitor. I give it to that. So um, the, this brings up the question, um, is this the main thing um, why you should use something? So I always thought this is bad. This is bad. Um, they don't have this in React Native land. I have my full code share here and I'm the coolest guy. But hear me out. There are more things to React Native than code share especially how you access the native UI elements, how you interact with the native layer. I think this is one of the strongest arguments for or in favor of React Native. So if you use a web framework, there will always be this layer, this bridge between your JavaScript code and what runs in like Swift and, and, and native code. And yes, we still have this, uh, this bridge concept with React Native as well, but it's also getting a lot better. With a new architecture, this bridge and the asynchronous exchange between your JavaScript and Swift or Kotlin code will get a lot faster. On top of that, there was really a great video from Theo who explained the, I think it's called React Native Secret Superpower, something like that. You can look it up on his channel where he explained where the basically the cross-platform layer sits exactly. And for web frameworks, it's pretty high. Yes, you can access the native stuff, but well, we don't really get a lot. For React Native, it's at a different level and we can directly get the UI elements, we get the native button elements, and we can really get the best performance of these things. Somebody recently asked on Twitter, okay, what happens if uh, Swift um, and Apple moves on from UI kit to only using Swift UI? And somebody replied, well, then we're gonna exchange that layer on React Native, no problem for us. And it's really going to be that easy. So the same thing is with Flutter. It has a, this layer at a different level and it just makes things a lot harder um, when it comes to building applications. So this is something why you want to use React Native. This, this layer is simply at the right level. On top of that, of course, I could recount and recap all the, the reasons for cross-platform. So you don't need like um, native knowledge. You don't have to understand Swift and Kotlin to build an app. Yes, at some point you might have to create your own plugins, but in many cases you can completely rely on JavaScript. Um, you don't need a separate team. You can have like a web team that's also building the native applications and like the whole sort of why you should go cross-platform applies to React Native, of course. But I'm pretty sure you know all about this if you've been following a few of my videos or if you've been following me for quite some time. So I don't want to recount all these things. But there are two more things that I want to mention and, and give in favor of why you want to use React Native. So as I said, the layer is great. The performance is great. Then we got Expo. So Expo is more of a suite of tools at this point. Yes, Expo is also a company and they're making money from their EAS, their application services. But what Expo brings to React Native is just making it unbelievable easy to build apps. And it's not like Expo is limiting. I've done a couple of episodes and videos on that topic and mentioned it again and again that with Expo pre-built, you're basically free to do whatever you want, but you can still get the benefits of Expo. Expo also has config modules, which makes it unbelievable easy. We have a course on this on Galaxies, by the way, to create your own Swift and Kotlin modules and use them with React Native, really. There are just a few steps and it just feels so magical and powerful to use these things. So Expo makes React Native development really easy and fun. 
We've just seen in December the beta release of Expo Router version 3, and we're going to have the stable release now in January. And that even introduces API routes to Expo Router. So Expo Router is another topic that's super interesting, which brings unified routing into our applications. There are just, as you can see, so many reasons to use React Native at that point. And I just want to make one last um claim for React Native besides all the great things about the performance, code push, and, and everything you can do with React Native, and that is jobs. So if you look up, for example, or the thing that most people do is Flutter versus React Native. This is usually what people take in, in consideration if they, should I learn Flutter? Should I use React Native? Flutter is higher in popularity. This has more questions on Stack Overflow. But if you look at the job market, and if your reason to learn React Native is to probably get a job, then please go with React Native. The React market is unbelievable big. So you can just think about it. Think about WordPress in the past. Everyone brought up a WordPress page and they're still bringing up WordPress pages. And we still need PHP developers to maintain all these things. And the same is true for a lot of web applications built with React. React has become the standard for a reason, not because it's the best. Swell might be better, Solid might have better ideas in some regards, Angular might be better for enterprise, but React is just so dominant because of the ecosystem. All the plugins that are built, all the packages and libraries and everything that's revolving and evolving around React has become so huge. And React Native is just benefiting from that. So the more people build stuff with React, the more they will also eventually build React Native applications because they have the skills for React and they won't suddenly say, oh, we have this epic React web application. Let's build a Flutter mobile application. It's pretty much nobody has ever said that, I guess. So if you want to get a job, if you're interested in finding work, learning React Native is a really safe bet especially in the United States, as React Native tends to have a bit better performance or a bit better result on iOS and uh, in the United States. Most people, I think, or many people favor iOS and Apple. So in other regions of the world, that might be different. So always keep that in mind in jobs. But in total numbers still, React Native completely beats Flutter. So we have performance, we have Expo, we have jobs, we have the layer at the right level. Uh, we have the ecosystem, so all of these are reasons why you should use React Native. Now, let's talk about why I think React Native might actually be the best choice. So, I've made a couple of videos about this in the past, React Native, whether it's Flutter, whether it's Capacitor, and I always said, hmm, it depends. But I kind of arrived at a slightly different point um, now in 2024. So... I would say use React Native unless you have a reason to not use it, okay? Use React Native for your next project unless you find real reasons why you shouldn't use it. I think that's going to be a better baseline for making a decision. So there are reasons probably to use Flutter. I think Flutter is also great on embedded systems with Dart as a language, um, and they might invest more into that in the future. Then we have stuff like Capacitor and Codover, which allows to wrap your web code and pretty much have 100% code reuse. This can be great if, for example, you are a solo developer and your responsibility is to create both a website and a native app at the same time. It's really hard to do this. Otherwise, yes, you can do Next.js Expo and the whole story, but the, the code share really is here completely the same if you use Capacitor and stuff like Ionic. So there might be a, a small thing. But again, then you have the drawbacks of having a, a web application on native, which has its own drawbacks in terms of performance and not being 100% native in terms of the components used in the web view. So my baseline recommendation and therefore the reason why it's probably the best is use React Native unless you find real reasons why you shouldn't use it. So, um, by the way, um, I said before that both these web frameworks, uh, Cordova Capacitor and React Native have the bridge and that it's getting better with a new architecture. Check out the podcast episode I did with Jacek, who really, really, uh, in a great way, described how that bridge works, what JSI is, and how we can benefit in the future from the new architecture and the different parts of this new architecture. So 
as a recap, I didn't use it because it didn't fit my business. I decided to use it because the market of React is unbelievable big and I actually fell in love with it. You should use it because there are so many great reasons and the outcome of React Native applications just speak for themselves. Check out what Evan is posting on X these days about the percentage of applications in the like top 100 developed with React Native and you're going to see so, so many apps are built with React Native and they have great performance and they look great and they work great and they feel great. So there are a lot of reasons for React Native and that is also probably why it's the best. The ecosystem of React is just the best you can get currently for a cross-platform framework and I'm pretty sure that like 99% of the time you're going to be very, very happy about making the decision for React Native. So go check it out. Um, if you think about starting a new application in 2024, of course, you should always list your like the factors and the things you want to have and uh, the scope of the project and whatnot. But again, start with the baseline of I will use React Native and only find reasons against that really counter using React Native. Again, if you want to learn it, check out galaxies.dev where we currently have the code galaxies24 going on. And next week, we're going to talk with Thor, which is actually not just his real name, from Superbase. Then we're going to talk uh, with Katie from Expo. And after that, we're going to have Theo on the podcast. So a lot of interesting guests. And I'm excited for what's coming in 2024 to the Rocket Ship podcast. So please do me a favor. If you're listening to this, especially on Apple, leave a rating on iTunes. It really helps to grow this podcast. I want to reach many more React Native developers this year and bring the, the good gospel to them that we can build epic mobile applications using React Native and we can actually enjoy the process without beating up each other. So have a great start in your 2024. Thanks for all your support and I'm looking forward to build some really cool apps with you this year. <laughs>